By tradition, it is believed that, that Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. We don't have a signed copy of it with his name on it, but it fits in with the stuff that he did. In verses 12 through 22 in chapter 1, there is none to comfort her. Now, Israel, Judah, Jerusalem are all referred to as her, um, as a woman. And there are various images that Jer Jeremiah uses to show the depth of the affliction of the sorrow. Uh, fire in the bones, a net for the feet, yoke for the neck, uh, crushing of grapes in the wine press. All of those are symbolic of the pain and problems that Israel would have if it was being crushed in the wine press, if it had the yoke and was having to carry heavy weights, if every time it tried to stand up there was a net for its feet, or if it had, if it felt like its bones were on fire. Um, the prophets always have, as they're making their pleas to the Lord in a circumstance, anything like this, they put themselves on, in the place of the people, and Jeremiah does this a little later on. But the thing that he, that the people he, he hopes are getting to understand is that they put themselves into this situation because of their idolatry and other personal wickedness and their unrighteousness of all sorts. Now he makes a point that none of their idols, none of Jerusalem's and Judah's idols uh, appeared ever to offer any help, neither did any of their so-called allies any of the countries round about that were uh, going to help in the rebellion against Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Egypt came up, but really didn't put up much of an effort and then fled back to the Nile. Uh, basically, in verses 11 through 22, he talks about, let the tears run down your face like a river day and night. Uh, there were heartbreaking times during the siege and even after the siege. Babies died abandoned in the street because there was no food. The parents would just take them out to some part of Jerusalem where far from home and just abandon them because they couldn't feed them and they just left them there for the baby to die so they wouldn't hear the crying. Uh, it talks about the phony prophets had not called the people to repentance. They had spoken flattering words to these people and giving them the idea that everything was fine and wonderful. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the economy now. Um, we hear about lenders who were giving mortgages out to people who they knew couldn't pay, so they would get the bonus for the mortgage. And then the whole thing comes tumbling down, collapsing, and uh, the people who got the money because they gave out the mortgage, had the money, but the people who got the home have lost the home, and many people, millions of people have lost their jobs. The whole thing was built on sin, in essence. And this is the same problem that Jerusalem and Judah were having. They built up a whole lifestyle, a whole civilization, in essence, based on sin. The leaders were saying, oh, everything is fine, everything is wonderful, yes, no, you don't have to worry about doing that. No, we can, we can go into the temple and we can worship all these false god idols. And so, of course, they wouldn't say that. We worship the, the queen of heaven, as they used to call Ashtoreth. We can worship Baal. They'll look after the rain and the food and everything will be fine. Hunky -dory. No, we don't have to worry about the old god. That was the god of the desert. That's not the god of our place now. And the people would basically believe it because this is what the leaders did. There was nothing in this particular point in time as he's writing his lamentation to rejoice about as far as Judah or Jerusalem were concerned. Absolutely nothing. Now, the question is, and this is where these people are in the depths of despair, total mess, people dying. Um, the question is, can Judah return to favor with God? Now, verses in chapter 3, verses 1 to 66, sort of tells us that Jeremiah is 
in this chapter is putting himself in the place of the people that he has been called to to tell them they need to repent. And he is trying to appeal to the Lord that they should be forgiven. Now, he understands something here, that the people in Israel had to learn, people in Judah had to learn the really hard way. Number one, the Lord wanted to forgive them and struggled with them for hundreds of years to get them to live righteously. They didn't, they wouldn't, they took it for granted that he didn't matter in their lives. And so what has to happen for their own good and for the good of all of their children and the generations that will happen after them is they need to be humbled and humbled so severely that they feel totally abandoned. They realize, they come to realize that all of these false gods, these idols and whatever else they were doing, all the allies who were going to be part of their rebellion, all the rest of us, that was all garbage. And the only one that was ever around for them when they needed them was the Lord. But they had pushed him so far away for so long that he let them find out just what they were capable of. And if they went, then feel totally abandoned on their own, then, and had suffered greatly because they realized that there was no help for them. Nothing they could do was good enough. Nothing their phony gods could do were good enough. Nothing their allies could do would be good enough. I mean, Egypt, Egypt didn't bring them any food. None of these countries around that came to Zedekiah and said, let's rebel against uh, Babylon. None of them brought them any food. Okay? Then they would understand that the Lord was their only hope. And at that particular point in time when they were driven to desperation, driven down to the depths of despair, and they caught a glimmer of hope that if they repented strongly enough, hard enough, long enough, and ordered their lives righteously enough, that there was hope through the Lord Jesus Christ. They could get back. It wasn't going to be easy, but it was going to be possible. And the reason it was going to be hard is they had been so ignorant for so many years. Now, the last part is, chapter 4, who's responsible for his whole mess? And verses 1 through 22, he says it's the sons of Zion. These were the religious leaders of the day, the people who were self-appointed leaders who stood up and said, Oh, don't worry about it. Everything is fine. We can worship Baal in here. We can, uh, yeah, don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're righteous enough. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, oh, well, this idea of repenting, this is, no, yeah, no, you're saved. You know, you, just, you put some money in the thing and you're okay. Sure. Well, we see what the Lord thought of that, don't we? Now, we talked about the mothers in Judah and how they had let their children down. They didn't teach the children the things they needed to know. They didn't feed the children. They didn't care for the children. They were busy sacrificing incense to these altars. They were busy hooring around after false idols and, and men. They were not doing the things that they should do. In verses 8 to 10, it tells us how bad it was during the siege. People ate their own children. Verses 21 and 22 talks about Edom. Edom was a country to the east of the Jordan River, a little north of the Dead Sea, not a big country. But they took advantage of the fact that Nebuchadnezzar had invaded Israel in order to make raids and try and capture some territory of Judah and take food and capture people and cities and whatever else they could. And here he's telling them, hey, don't worry about it, guys. We know you, you, know, you did that, but uh, guess what? The Lord, you're next. We had something happen to us. You're going to have something happen to you. And chapter 5, the whole chapter basically is a prayer, Jeremiah's prayer, for relief from these things. All the things that are happening to them. And they even have to buy, you know, in, Ju in Judah, if, if you needed water or wood, you just went and got it. Here, because it's all owned by the Babylonians, they have to go and pay for it. And they don't have any jobs or anything to pay for it with. 